<laughs> if my babe saw how I was driving right now, she would not let me continue this review. <laughs> Hey, what's going on people? Tech Jamo. So, yeah, made it to a little car park. I'm going to do my little review of the exterior and the interior. And then we're going to take it for a drive. Obviously, you know, I'm not really a car guy. So, I can't really tell you too much about the Zoe. But I know it's the GT Line model, which I think is the highest model. Do you know what? I'll just put the specs in the description section below. But we didn't go for certain trims and specifications on the car kind of thing. So... Yeah, let's have a look at the outside, let's have a look at the inside and then give it a drive and see how it goes. So yeah, I guess if you're looking at this car, you've already seen the outside and everything. So I'll just, you know, show you a few key points. This is the charging port here, as well as the logo, which is really cool. It sits nice and flush. These lights are crazy at night time, fam. They're crazy bright and wide. You can see the whole road and more, fam. They're so lit. And I just love the curves of the car, fam. Look at the curves. The curves are legit, bro. <laughs> Them curves are legit. You got the alloys there as well, fam. I'm not sure what size they are, but they're the standard alloys that come with the GT line Michelin things on the tires. Um, let me just show you the boot real quick since we're back here. Oh, if that means anything to anyone, there you go. ZE50 electric. Guys, look at that boot. Look how massive that boot is. Can you even get a bigger boot than that? <laughs> it's such a small hatchback. Damn, and obviously you can put the rear seats down as well, so it give you more space if you're trying to do that young Ikea shop. Guys, it's just a nice looking car from the outside. But anyway, yeah, let's get on the inside. All right, so yeah, inside the car, it's um, it's pretty nice. You know what, let me show you from the different angles so it's actually easier for you to see what's going on. There we go. All right, so you've got your steering wheel, obviously. You've got your little instrument cluster behind there, which is another digital screen, to be honest. You've got your big digital screen in the middle, which is kind of Tesla-esque because obviously it's portrait orientation. Usually it's always a landscape thing, like a 16 by nine, but this is a nice kind of iPad orientation that we've got going on here. And I really like the way that they've just done it in the center. It's very simplistic. Everything else in the car is just calm. You've got these half fake leather, half um, material seats kind of thing as well. You've got your two little drink holders in the middle, um, electronic handbrake and you got your little what is that it's not even a i want to call it a gear stick but i'll just call it gear selector um <laughs> you've got two usb ports there and they are both for data so you can plug android auto into either of them whereas with the honda e you can only plug it into the one that's nearest to the steering wheel because only one of those usb ports are for data and the rest of them are just for power you've also got your car cigarette lighter thing here so, you know, if you want to do that, use that for power as well. That's all good. Um, and then one thing that's really cool about the temperature controls is that inside these dials, they're actually little screens. So you can turn it on kind of thing and you can actually see the numbers on the screen go up and down. That's really cool. So you technically got three screens down here um, and you've got a screen up here and obviously a screen behind the steering wheel. I almost forgot to mention the instrument cluster. Let me just close that so we've got more sound isolation. The instrument cluster that we have here in regards for controlling the windows. So all the passengers, um, their windows are, you know, pushed to go down and pushed to come up. They're not automatic, so you can't just push them once and have them go all the way down. However, the driver's window is automatic and you can push it once to make it go down. Um, and you don't have to hold it and you can also pull it once really hard to make it come up and you won't have to hold it as well. Is that called automatic windows? I'm not sure what that's called. They're all automatic windows, but this has got the one touch basically. So you want to touch it once and it goes down. Whereas with this side, you touch it once and <laughs> that's it. It just goes down a little bit. So you have to touch it and keep it held for it to go all the way down. Whereas this one will just go up automatically. I'm not sure what that's called. Is that automatic, automatic? I'm not too sure. 
One other sick thing I've just realized whilst playing with the windows is that the back windows go all the way down, fam, like pre this. Fam. All the way down, you know. Now, just to quickly show you on the passenger side, you've got this kind of little bit that you can put stuff in. This does not lift up. Um, and you've got a little glove compartment here, which really isn't big enough to put much else in apart from gloves and a few occasional face masks. Stay safe, people, stay safe. Now, as we go into the back seats, you can see the same kind of design from the front is, you know, leaning out to the back. Um, you've got free headrests, because yes, this is a free seater in the back there. Um, so that's really nice. You've got your, you got bare seat belts. You've got one, two, three, four. I think one of these is for like a baby seat kind of thing. You've got these little, what do they call them? ISO fix points. So that's really cool as well. You've got ISO fix points on both sides. So if you've got the twins in the back, they're all cool. They're very safe. Let's keep it moving. Now the speaker system is very wild. You've got one speaker in either of the rear doors and you've got one speaker in either of the front doors as well. I feel like there's more speakers here, but that's all I can see for now. And you've got a little microphone up here for when you're connecting your phone for hands-free. So yeah, that's it for the outside and the inside of the car. I guess we'll just get in, have a little whip round and um, see how the actual drive feels. I already know that the drive feels nice, but you know, I'm gonna give it another chance. Um, and just do some some driving, some talking, which I'm not really good at. And yeah, hopefully give you guys a better indication of what it's like to run around with this car day to day. How do I even get this on? Right, press start. No, car's already on? No, press start. There we go. I can see the miles per hour meter now. Um, and then just press reverse, put the handbrake down. Why is it beeping like that? Oh, it's because I'm parked close to the wall. Right, so I can see the reverse mirror and I'm good to go. Guys, can we stop the whole video and just discuss the quality of the reverse camera? What is this? Look at my cheap 40 pound dash cam. Yeah. Now look at the actual reverse camera. You can't look. You can't even see the license plate of my Honda E camera. My Honda E. And you can see it clearly in the mirror kind of thing. What is that for quality? I'm just off going like that. One thing with electric cars is just so weird is that I'll never get used to the fact that as soon as you press on and you put it in gear, you're good to go. It's a very smooth drive, very smooth. Again, let me not gas you guys up. I'm coming from a manual smart 4.4. So going on to anything that's automatic, this just feels weirdly smooth to me. It's just so calming, you know? There's no lifting my foot off the clutch carefully so that I don't get, get, get. One thing that I do notice straight away, cause I'm going at like eight miles per hour now, the pedestrian noise is very loud. Like I can hear it clearly in the car. And literally anyone that I drive by is looking at me like, yo, what the hell is that? So I can put it on drive and I can put it on B mode. And B mode is supposed to have, yeah, B mode has a lot more aggressive brake regen or regenerative braking. Um, it's not as aggressive as the regen brake mode in the Honda E, but you know, I can still feel a little bit of regen here. And as I'm going down hills, I can see that the regen meter is going down to, you know, tell me that it's actually doing its thing. And I can feel it slowing down quite a bit. However, it doesn't feel like the car is actually going to slow down to a stop. I feel like it's just slowing me down ever so slightly. Now, my partner says she doesn't really like the driving position because there's no height adjustment on the seats. I'm only five foot five or five foot six. And I find it quite fine because for me, because of the higher driving position, I kind of feel like I'm driving an SUV or a bigger vehicle which makes me feel like, yeah, yeah, this is nice. I'm getting into a little car, but I've still got that range for a feel almost, or like a bigger feel like that. But my partner now, cause she's a bit taller than me, she's probably like five, seven, five, eight. Um, she prefers to have the ride lower, obviously, so that she can, you know, she's not too close to the ceiling. But for me, I'm, I'm all right with this, to be honest. Like, to be honest, <clears throat> with a car like this, 
with electric cars, one of the most annoying things is that if you're living in a flat or a place where you can't install a free wall box charger, you have to rely on public chargers. Now with this car, because you get so many miles, it's actually easy for you to, you know, have a little charge up on your weekly shopping Sainsbury's or Asda, and then you that could last you throughout the week. And that would literally be free because it's free to charge up at my Asda. Um, so yeah, fam, that would be, yo, it's light work. It's literally light work. There we go. There we go. Whoa. Whoa. Damn, it's got some acceleration on it, you know. But I just love the acceleration of the roundabout. As soon as you put your foot down, it gives you the power you desire. <laughs> Literally. One thing that annoys me is that um, the only way to turn the volume up and down. Traffic alert, A2 to 8 road works ahead. Oh, I've got my traffic alert. Yeah, so the only, thing, only way you can turn the volume up and down is by pressing these two buttons in the bottom right of the infotainment screen and they're not really buttons they're like touch screen buttons so i can see them and stretch to them but trying to press them whilst concentrating on the road is a bit dodgy as it is with all touch screen buttons fam because you've got to kind of adjust for because you can't feel for them you have to use your vision to know where they are and um yeah no it's just a little bit difficult when you're trying to focus on the road at the same time guys let me just conclude and tell you guys that this car it's got a wild feeling to it fam i think it's very fair to say that this car handles itself in the traffic it absolutely handles itself on the a roads up to 50 miles per hour and stuff like that and because of the big battery it also completely handles itself on the motorway where even if you do go to 70 miles per hour you won't get your full 200 and something worth of miles but because the miles are so high in the first place you'll still get a decent amount of mileage to be doing regular motorway driving if that's what you wanted to my only little nitpicks are the fact that there's such limited ways to control the volume like you literally have to rely on the bottom right touch screen um, it would be nice to have some steering wheel controls uh, the noise that you get when you're going above 50 like the tire noise I'm not sure what noise it is but some kind of noise that you're getting um, is annoying <laughs> and I think that's it I think that's it for my nitpicks literally everything else is correct the cruise control works perfectly it's not the best cruise control like it's not adaptive but it works you've got your blind assist control you've got your lane assistance when you're above 44 miles per hour so what it will do is it will vibrate and give you a little correction if you're about to come out of your lane i love the acceleration the acceleration is hella fast oh my gosh it's not quite you know seven seconds or anything but is is quick enough to get where you need to go in life this this car is like the bog standard ultimate quality that you should get from any electric car the nippy acceleration which is not too crazy you get the you know silent maneuvering you get the nice smooth electric drive um you get all of that stuff all of that all of that all of that 